Well, let's take a listen to what the PM apps say. Well, it's great to be here at COP to build on the legacy of Glasgow, but also continue the leadership that our country has shown in tackling climate change. Now, of course, this is about the, the future and the planet that we leave our children, but it's also about the here and now. At home, many people are grappling with very as a result of Russia's illegal war. So that just highlights the need to move quickly to improve our energy security, to transition to cheaper, safer, cleaner forms of energy. But I've also had the opportunity here to talk to world leaders, uh, including President Macron, about all the different ways that we can work together, including tackling illegal migration. And I'll come to that in a second. On the specific of the Climate Fund, the money and the time frame, are you committed to what was set out before? Yeah, we remain committed to the 11.6 billion that we announced and the last time, year right. for international climate finance. And actually, today, you know, we're seeing the benefit that that can bring to countries around the world as we help countries like Kenya, for example, transition to net zero. That actually is also bringing exciting opportunities for British companies. It's involving the private sector, which is the right thing to do, but also helping those countries transition to a cleaner future, okay. creating jobs in the process. I know you're not committing to the time frame, and if it's a longer time frame, that's a dilution, isn't it? No, the, the plan was to do this over five years. Now, the exact pace of this always is dependent on the projects being ready at the right time, but we remain committed to those plans. I'm making that commitment again in my statement later today. You've just met the President of France, as you, as you mentioned. What in specific terms are you and he going to do about this growing problem of people crossing the Channel in small boats? You know, it was great to meet President Macron to talk about not just tackling illegal migration, but the range of other areas in which we want to cooperate closely with the French on. But also, it's remember that this is an issue that affects many countries. It's, and actually, I've been talking to other European leaders as well about our shared challenge in tackling illegal migration. And I think there is an opportunity for us to work closely, not just with the French, but with other countries as well. You, you know, you will hear more details about that in the coming weeks as those conversations happen amongst all our teams. But I'm actually leaving this with renewed confidence and optimism that working together with our European partners, we can make a difference, grip this challenge of illegal migration and stop people coming illegally. By when and by what kind of order of magnitude, how soon will things improve? How soon will fewer people be attempting those perilous crossings? Well, look, we all want this situation to resolve itself as quickly as possible. I also want to be honest with people that it, it's, it's a complex issue. It, it doesn't, it's not one simple solution that's going to solve it overnight. I, I wouldn't be being honest if I said that there was. There's a range of things we need to do. But what I want people to be reassured by that I absolutely am determined to grip this. I've been spending an enormous amount of my own time on it. I've been talking to several European leaders about it today. And there's a range of things that we will action as quickly as we can to get a grip of this situation and and, and reduce the amount of illegal migration that we're seeing. You say you want to be honest about this. Is not the honest truth that your Home Secretary, the person you chose to appoint as Home Secretary just six days after she'd resigned from that post, has made the situation worse, made it worse at Manston, where plenty of people, according to some, have been held unlawfully? Look, the Home Secretary is actually at the moment making sure that we reduce the numbers at Manston and we're making very good progress on that and, and we actually return that operation to where we would all like to see it. But in the long term, to make sure that we don't have a situation that we saw at Manston happening again, we need to, we need to reduce the number of people coming here illegally. Now, that's going to require the Home Secretary and others to work constructively with partners around Europe to stop people coming in the first place. And there's a range of things we need to do to make that a reality. That's what the Home Secretary is focused on and that's what I'm focused on as well. You appointed a minister, Sir Gavin Williamson, who was abusive and foul-mouthed in his conversations via text with a, with a colleague. Um, did that amount to bullying? Well, look, there's an independent complaints investigation that is happening, and it's right that we let that, that process run its course before passing it's judgment. It's definitely happening, but, is that? It's up and running, is it? Yes, yes, that is. There's an independent complaints investigation process that is happening, and I want to see the results of that, obviously. But I've been very clear that the language is not right, it's not acceptable, and that's why I welcome the fact that Gavin Williamson has expressed regret about that, and now we'll wait to see what the investigation says. If it's not acceptable, why on earth are you keeping him as, him as a minister? Well, as I said, there's that there's an independent complaints process that's being conducted at the moment. It would be right to let that process conclude before making any decisions about the future. Let me ask you about the case of Ala Abdel Fattah, the uh, British citizen who's on 
hunger strike, now on water strike in jail here. You've promised to raise this with the Egyptian authorities here. Have you managed to do that and to what effect? Yeah, I am hoping to see the uh, President Sisi later today. Well, I will, of course, raise uh, this issue. It's something that not just the United Kingdom, but many countries want to see resolved. Let me ask you about Matt Hancock, a former cabinet colleague, now out eating goodness knows what in the Australian outback, one of your fellow Conservative MPs. Your, your view on what he is doing? You know, I've said already that I think it's, it was a disappointing decision that he made to participate in the programme at this time, and I very much support the decision that the Chief Whip has taken to suspend the Conservative Whip from Matt Hancock. So he's no longer a Conservative MP right now. Will he be in the future? Will he get it back? I said these whipping matters are, of course, a, a question for the Chief Whip. But I, yeah, on. but no, but I've been very clear that I was very disappointed with the decision he made. I think there's lots for us all to be getting on with at this time, and that's what I think people should be focused on. Final question, I promise. Uh, Boris Johnson has said he is here in a purely supportive role. How would you describe it? Oh, it's great that uh, the former Prime Minister is here, and I think it really? says something. You know, I think it says something great about the UK that not only have we got the current Prime Minister here, we've got a former Prime Minister here. It just demonstrates our leadership on this issue globally. You know, and Boris was a stalwart champion of building a greener future. He deserves enormous credit and praise for that. And as I said, it's enormous credit to the UK that we have not just one, but also a former Prime Minister here. That's the UK leading on tackling climate change, something we should all be proud of. Thank you.